levels of faith. Three levels of faith. The first level is faith to solve personal problems, to meet your needs. Okay, put up the scripture, please. Let them see. There is a crippled man in Luke. Is it Luke chapter 6 or 7? And the Bible said he was carried by his friends. They even opened the roof of the house and dropped him where Jesus was preaching. And then the Bible said where he saw their faith. Second level is corporate faith. Faith to solve other people's problems. To solve a wider range of problems that will affect others. The first level is personal faith. To deal with your own problem, maybe your own family. So, when I, we teach now, make sure that your messages are not just narrowing on individuals. You are just raising a group of self-centered, selfish group of people. You don't, your messages are not kingdom compliant. Your messages must be kingdom compliant. Jesus did not teach us in the Lord's Prayer. My Father, which are in heaven, he said, Our. There is a reason for that. He didn't say, give me this day, my deliverer. He said, give us. So when somebody develops his prayer life or his faith life, he must deploy it now to start affecting people. So you see now, you learn how to pray for souls. You must deploy it to win your family and win your city. So it's called corporate faith. That's a higher level of faith. Then the highest level is, you know, kingdom, you know, Propel faith. That is faith to implement the will of God on the earth. That heaven has a plan, but you have the faith to see that plan implemented. Hmm. We're going to do a book review. You will see where a whole country is praying. They are, they are going to be massacred and they finish praying. Nothing happened. It happens all the time. The people of God will fast and pray. And when they think they're wondering why God has not done anything. Yes. Because no prayer gets answered until a human being rises up. I'm going to repeat that. <laughs> if why I go but mama mama okay, beg go go go. If all we did in planning for where a crusade was just to pray, it would have been a massive flop. Prayer does not set up equipment. Prayer does not do mobilization. There are a million of one thing that requires practical initiatives. Prayer does not record the program. Prayer does not do media. Prayer does not do broadcast. It's human beings that do it. You don't plan. You don't set goals. You don't mobilize people and you expect to succeed. You're a joker. It's like church. You see empty seat in your church. You should not have rest. If you let that happen, it repeats, it repeats, it becomes a culture. Then things start dying. That's how church is that. You see one empty seat, your whole workers, your whole pastors that week, nobody will sleep. The, mass, the level of deployment you would do. This thing you do to do a crusade is what you need to do. You have a mega church. So stop making ministry an event. Stop making it an event. It's not a crusade. It has to happen on a weekly basis on a daily basis. No service and without you deploying again. Massive mobilization, massive prayer, massive follow-up. The next service they will explode. And you come there, there will be so many new believers, so many new visitors. But if you think you are just praying, you sit down and then things happen. You are a big joke. So you see Paul's statement that faith without works is what? Dead. If you remove human being after all those gymnastics in prayer, nothing will happen. So the review we're going to do today, there are so many things it will open up so that you will see. 
what causes frustrations. That it, see there in religion. Security is part of kingdom. You see everything you have under government. When you talk about kingdom of God, you're talking about God's government. Everything is in it. Education, business, finance. If it is only religion you have understood, sorry. And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. The children of Israel sighed. That you, you're talking about people have suffered so much. They're crying to God. Sighed by reason of their bondage. They cried. Their cry came up to God by reason. Of, God has answered prayer. Yet nothing has changed. There were people expecting God to come down and do. That's how they expect God to come and win an election. It's very good to come and be printing money so that you have money. You're a joker. You don't understand Christianity. Their cry came up to God by reason of their bondage. And look at verse 24. And God heard. Everyone say God heard. I think I think you will help me preach now. Help me tell anybody around you. Say God has heard. Tell him God is not deaf. It is your part that is remaining. Tell him heaven has heard. It is human being that is missing. The, the problem is who will I send who will go for it? That's the problem. The problem is the harvest is plenty. What? The laborers have human beings. Human beings. Who the man God will use is the problem. You're talking about prayer and fasting now. So you see now when I'm talking about planning and strategies, you're praying, have a paper and be developing plans and strategies. Think as you live here, hit the road running. Even yesterday when I left, if I tell you, you don't know some of these times you see me, I come in a little. It, it, you are praying, I'm busy planning and deploying. You are praying, I'm, I'm, I'm hooked up with heaven to bring the answer to what you're praying about. Huh. That's how you know you've come to sonship because sonship is where dominion begins. That's where kingdom begins. You have matured. You have understood. Oh, oh, oh. Look at salvation that came to us. How long did it take? When did man eat the forbidden fruit? 6,000 years ago. When did salvation come? 4,000 years after. What is the issue? A human being that will come and go to the cross. Please, show them. Uh, okay, okay. Let me complete this reading. And God heard their groaning. And God remembered this covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, with Jacob. The verse 25. Is that? Yeah. And God looked upon the children of Israel and he had respect to them. Yet nothing happened. Actually, between this time, if you go to the book of Joshua, to the time something happened, two years again passed. Two years. They kept. So what is going on? You have heard. You even have respect for them. Uh -huh. He's a human being. There is evidence that they stayed 30 years extra in bondage. What was going on? The man God will use is not ready. He's still being processed. You are the one delaying. It's not God to move. You see this move is your move. You make one step, God will make a thousand to back it up. But once there's nobody to make that move, nothing will happen. That's the essence of the book you're going to, and in this book you're going to see how it is a woman that God used to save a nation. So chapter 3, verse 7. Now, God has found somebody. He's now talking to him. His name is, is Moses. And there is something here that amazes me. Everybody's praying to God, taking the problem to God. And the God they took the problem to is taking the problem to a man.
The angel came. You know what he told me? This, this night, oh, last night, a lot of angelic activities happened. And we're going to, there are some more things they told me we have to implement. When we get to this evening, and tomorrow, a lot of riots, a lot of riots. All kinds of things will happen this year. There's no type of stories you will not hear this year. Miraculous intervention. But you know what he told me? He said that God has commanded all of them to help us. I said, what? He said that discussions have held over what we are doing. And God is pleased. I said, wow, I was happy for that one. Then he now said he has commanded them to help us. I said, please, I know that sometimes when people give this information, you don't want it to be shared. Can I tell, share this one? Am I allowed? He said, yes. I had to get that permission because I wanted to be sure because I've suffered one time before for talking something I'm supposed to keep. But you will see the angel of the Lord showed up where the children of Israel were giggled and having come meeting. And he appeared to Joshua. He now gave him instructions for deployment. Three layers of deployment. Without it, all those angels will do nothing. It's about battle of Jericho. You know, I think that now that you people are here, why don't you just go and kill him? Sort out Jericho. Why do we still have to? And when they push the wall down, why don't you just do like this and kill off everybody? No, it's the children of Israel that have to go and do the killing, but they will do the pulling down of the wall. But as you do the killing, for every one you kill, they will kill 100. The Bible actually recorded in one of the battles that were more killed by these invisible powers than what Joshua and his army did. But if Joshua and his army stop, the whole thing will stop. Remember where that woman borrowed many vessels, not a few. This is human part. And then start pouring. The moment they picked up from her own end, no more. The other side too stop. It is what you bind on earth that is bound in heaven. What you lose on earth that is losing heaven. You stop, heaven stops. So I've surely seen the affliction of my people. Now, you see, all the prayers that the whole nation prayed that God to God, God took the prayer. Now he's passing it, talking to a human being. I want to see how prayer gets answered. So that there will be maturity. You don't live here and go and sit, wondering, waiting for something to fall from somewhere. No. It is when you move, that all these things you have accomplished now boom, comes behind you. I've surely seen the affliction of my people which are in, in Egypt and have heard the, their cry by reason of their tax master for I know their sorrow. So God has heard. But what is the next verse? Verse, verse 8. And I'm come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians to bring them. And I thought by the time God came down, he should actually go bring them out. Who can stand God? Go to Pharaoh's house, appear in pillar of fire. Can Pharaoh stand it? Can the magicians withstand you? It does not work that way. That's not how it works. You are waiting for God. You are going to wait forever. If you see something happen, it happened because God has found a man, a human being. So make yourself the instrument in God's hand. I've come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egypt and to bring them up <laughs> onto a good land, a large land, onto a land flowing with milk and honey. This is what you call your land of destiny, your promised land, that place where your vision becomes a reality, where that thing God has been showing you, what he has been promising you happens. Your own land too is a land flowing with milk and honey. 
dreams have become a reality. Until the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites. But you are now showing Moses that there are problems in the land of promise. There are obstacles, giants that will pose. These are the Hittites, the Amorites. So after the Egyptians, I thought my problems are over. No. To take my destiny, to possess my inheritance, I have to fight through it. There are giants. Giants that are more deadly than the ones you saw in Egypt. So watch the next verse. verse. Now, therefore, after all this grammar, I want you to see the conclusion. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. I have seen the oppression where will the Egyptian oppress them? Yes, verse 10. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee to Pharaoh. You say you've come down. Why are you not going to Pharaoh? Why are you asking me to go? God goes in a man. God goes through men. He's a human being that will be the face and God will be the backup power. It's like, if you see what the Saint just told, <laughs> told me. So, when they finished, they, my confidence now expanded to the top of a tower. So you see now, <laughs> I do my part. I speak to the Red Sea, they divide it. The technology for dividing the seas is nonsense to them. It's breakfast. But it's my job to speak to it. It's my job to take the action. They will back it up. That's how it is with you. All those things, goals you are setting, yeah, requires execution. You know how I was talking to this one, I was saying, uh, because at the children's church, you teach them that God will do it. That's what you tell. Because babies, their parents do everything for them. When you start coming of age, you realize that when parents have challenge, they send their children that are mature to go and take care of the situation. That's what the kingdom of God does. If you look at Jesus, you understand sonship. That is not the father that had to come and fight with Lucifer or solve the problem Adam created. It's another Adam that will solve it. But the father will back him up. It is sons that bring glory to their father. You don't train them well. You create babies who are always dependent on their parents. You know, for example, now yesterday we were talking about charity. A stupid person will sit here and be thinking, oh, thank God. Hi, Pastor David. I'm so grateful that God brought me to Dominus. Now, I'm going to now bring my need and send it to him so that they can give me. These people have compassion. You see, all those things we taught, we're looking for champions that will go and implement it. And you are the person. That's why you could come here. We're looking for the remnant that will go and implement it. And then God will back them. It is sons that go and win the battle and bring the glory to their father. That's what you learn from Jesus. The Bible said, hey, children, a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb are his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty one. The weapons the mighty man fights with are his sons. He said, happy is the man that has his quiver full of them. He will answer the enemy at the gate. 
So you get to a point. When you were a baby, your parents fight for you. When you grow, you go fight the en enemies of the family and bring honor. I tell your dad, sit down. Who is that person insulting my dad? You go to the gate and beat him up. I told you that we're not in elementary school here. This is post-encounter. There is encounter for babies. This one is post, advanced. There is encounter. If you go to encounter, they don't talk like this. Oh. They will tell you, oh, you have rejection. Jesus has carried your rejection. Oh, you are demon in trouble. You know what? Jesus carried your demon. That Jesus that is carrying everything is a son. You need to start carrying things now. That's advanced encounter. That's advancing. That's what he means. That those who suffer with him will rule with him. Rulership is given to sons, not to babies. Rulership will wait until the baby matures. So God just found a man here, another son, that can take care of Pharaoh. That's the difference between God. He's frank. He told Malachi, tell the priest. You see, the, the message was to priest. The same way the message can be to kings. Huh? He said, you bring me animals that are blind. The ones that have running stomach. Go and give it to your governor. Will he accept it? Only thing you keep getting is baby food. You know what they do? God will make sure he gives you something so you don't die. Survivor. It's called manna. The promised land, never. never. Promised land is dominion. You don't give it to babies. A pastor. That church, you and that church. This is what the problem is now. You don't have anybody telling you. This one should start telling you the truth. Though. Start telling them because there is no way out. You go, oh, come on, come on, the billion flow, the billion flow. When you finish, you go and sell 10,000. No, it is the measure you meet that will be measured back to you. Jesus has been talk, teaching this. It is the Paul said, if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. There is no amount of, listen, we are commanded to give charity to the poor so that they won't die. But charity will never make them wealthy. It is only the poor that practices charity that will move out of poverty. It's a survival system God put in his kingdom so that the people that are down can, will not, yeah, because they're also God's children. You don't like it, it's the truth. It's just that I'm being blunt. Yeah, they said Paul's letter is blunt. But his presence is weak. Because when you see him, he's a very small man. So what I just did is to decide to be blunt. Because to do circumcision, you need sharp knife. There are some things that so much foolishness have gone on for so long. So Paul wrote to Timothy, he said, rebook them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Please put it up, let them see. So in case they think it's just me misbehaving. Put it up. Pastoral epistle. Rebook them sharply. Then they will become sound in the faith. Because normal preaching is not working. They finish hearing all this. They go back to the same thing. And then they wonder. The same cycle is where they are year after year. And I wonder what is going on. Please show them the Timothy scripture. Okay, I think the particular issue he was correcting here had to do with greed and some other things. Look, show verse 10. There are many unruly. So this one is rebellion. Vain talkers, this will gossip. Deceivers, especially day of the circumcision. These people of the circumcision are Jews. There are many of them in the church. And you are pastoring this kind of church very heady and rebellious people, people who gossip around in the church, deceivers. You know, 
like this group of deceivers, there is a group they call, um, Paul has another word he used in First Corinthians for them. They, they go visiting bread and cunning money out of them. Hmm? Uh, what do you call them? Extortioners. He calls them extortioners. Now, especially the ones from the Jewish background, verse 11, whose mouth must be stopped. It is a beg them. It's leadership that should do it. Who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not to fulfill. So they are brethren. Go win souls they won't win. Plant your own church, you won't plant. Plant circle, but they will go around visiting, creating confusion, gossiping about some people. You find out in leadership, you have to use. A shepherd is not just a, a shepherd has authority. Whose mouth must be stopped. Even some you discipline. There's church discipline. No? Just like you have in your family. Then look at the next verse. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said the Christians are always liars and evil beasts and slow bellies. Three, three very bad characters. Three very bad characters. Look at what Paul said. He said the thing is true. Look at it. Next verse. This witness is true. This assessment is correct. Therefore, rebook them sharply. This is another one you correct with teaching. Rebook them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. You see those two disciples that were going from Jerusalem to a mouse after Jesus had died and they were discussing, he said, we thought he were being the one that was serving. Did you hear how Jesus talked to him? He said, you, oh, you f fools and slow of heart to believe what they, I think there were about two times he did a book to them and one to Peter. Peter's one was very sharp. Get deep behind me, Satan. But those two times, this one, he used the word fools. Jesus so. It's people that by now should have grown. But the Bible tells us how to deal with it. The pastoral authority covers a series of things. Please, you should show it to them in Timothy. As hot, teach, instruct, then it's a rebook with all authority. Show them that one. I want them to see it. So the things I have to show you, these things speak as hot. And what? And let no man despise you. And in your house too, in parenting, you should know. So the wisdom now is knowing when, yes, it's needed. You, that is needed where people have been taught. It's for certain class of people who have been. Uh, God will never <laughs> correct you or flog you for what he has not taught you. Never forget that. God will never give an exam for a lecture he has not given. Never. God is not unjust. So if you want to understand what I've been describing, at this table, stable, stable enough, Two of you try to carry it. Let me see. Let me remove this water for you. Try to carry it. Sir, please join them in the middle, the other side. You come, come to this side. So can you imagine if this is a heavy burden, God's burden, God's vision, and it's heavy. The four people can't. We need like 20 people. So when I invite Pastor Jerry, come. So he comes. You know what he, he would do? 
you just do like this. Do, do like, don't touch the table. Just do, hold, do like you're touching the cloth. And be just and be, you know, yeah. Yeah, let's be moving. You think you have an army, but it's actually four men that are in that army. But you are surrounded. Can you come and join? And just do what Pastor Jerry is doing. You can even be encouraged and be just not. Another person. You think they are in the army. Yeah, let's go back, you know. But they are not in the army. They are just fully. But the problem they forget that is they are dealing with God. It's not human beings. Yeah. That's what happens. So miracles happen when somebody cares. Miracles happen when people take responsibilities. The supernatural does not operate in isolation. It operates in partnership with men. If you get this, you start getting 100% of your prayers answered. And you start being a major instrument in the hand of God to accomplish a lot. <laughs> when you leave here, hit the road running. I know they say fasting till the end of the month. While you are doing that remaining fasting, be executing. What you have collected from P and P, let me tell you, three programs you need to watch and follow. They are on point. Watch P and P. You see this this post encounter, and then there's a program we did in Lagos with Pastor Poju. Eh? Go and watch that mountain. Go and watch the series, my friend. Why you're doing that? Be running and be implementing. There are very few places now where you go, you really hear God's word for the now. There are very few. There are a lot of activities in the body of Christ. I don't listen to nonsense. I don't listen to nonsense. Just like in the physical, you should be careful what you feed your body. In the spiritual, you should be careful what you feed your spirit. You are what you eat. Hit the road running. Planning. Networking. And action. Networking, deploying, financing, and execution. There will be some sessions sitting down to do brainstorming, strategizing. It's part of action. <laughs> 